Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Zach B, and welcome back to Blowout Gaming. Today, guys, I am taking you through Nitrado. That's right, guys, Nitrado settings are kind of confusing, and I wanted to take you through a little tutorial today. Hopefully, this video helps you guys. Now, as you can see, we're already on Nitrado's homepage. From here, you would go ahead and choose what product you're looking for. In this case, we would be looking at a game server. Now, we would go ahead and click game server, and it would take us to the next section where we would choose our game. So, choose the initial game startup. As you can see, guys, it actually has a list of all of the servers, all of the games that they support. Battlefield, Counter-Strike, DayZs, all of them. But we are looking at ARC. So, ARC, we have PC, PS4, and mobile, and then survival of the fittest. Now, understand that Xbox servers have to be set up through Microsoft. So here we're looking at the PS4 servers or PC servers typically. I actually play console, so I set up PS4 servers. So let's go ahead and click PS4, and we'll choose the game. Now this here is where we choose the size of the server we want to set up. So the Dodo is their smallest package at $13, 10 slots, which means you and nine of your friends can play all the time as much as you want, $13 a month. Really not that bad as far as I'm concerned for setting up servers. Now, the Raptor is going to be 16 slots, which is actually necessary for the Genesis 2 map. So that's just a little separate thing. Otherwise, I usually go with the Dodo. And then, of course, the Rex is 32 slots. And then Custom is up to 100 players. We'll pick just to go ahead and show you what's next. Now, after we choose our option, it wants us to choose our data center up top. Where's our latency coming from? I'm choosing LA. I actually live on the West Coast, so I'm going to choose the West Coast. And you can see we select it here, and we'll hit the next button. And then the last page here is where you would actually charge it to your account. Now, I'm not setting it up. I don't need another server. I just wanted to walk you through the first initial steps. Once you pay for it, it'll move immediately to step seven for installation. And it'll bring you to this screen here. So this here, guys, is our homepage. As you can see on the left-hand side, my services, parent lock, my account, support requests. This is where you guys are going to manage your servers. And the main screen here shows each of those servers. Now, obviously, none of these servers are running except for our Genesis 2. And to interact with our actual settings and set up this brand new server, we're going to click this little gear icon web interface. Now, as you can see, guys, you've been brought to your dashboard. The dashboard is going to basically give you the basics of your server, as you can see, how much memory it's using, how many people are on, some of the basic stuff. Now, on the left-hand side, guys, you see information, settings, and tools. Under the settings, the first category, general, there's a little wrench there. Let's click on that. So this here, guys, is going to be our basic settings page. All of the settings below are going to have to do with the basic setup of your server. Now, you don't have to use all of them, but we're going to go through and I'm going to show you which ones I like to use. First things first, we have base settings. Now, as you can see, here is where we're going to put in the server name. That's actually what you search for when we're searching for servers on the unofficial server tab on Arc. So I actually named mine Blowout Gaming YouTube Server. Message of the day is the initial message that pops up when you start the server. So when you join the server, people will see, thanks for checking out the server. And that message of the day duration is going to be 10 seconds. That's what the 10 means right below that. And now if you want your server password protected so that you actually have to enter a password before you can join the server, just for your closest friends or something like that, this is where you would enter that. You'd put in whatever it is, and that's the password you would then give out. The admin password is just what it sounds like once the server is started up, this is the password you would use to enter into admin mode, where you would have your admin gun and you'd be able to enter in cheat commands. The language I chose, of course, is English. And then this here is where you choose your map. And as you can see, Genesis Part 2 is one of a bunch of different maps that you can choose from. But like I said, you can see this little box here. Genesis Part 2 actually requires more memory, more RAM, which means we need a larger 16-slot server. Scrolling down a little bit further, you'll see the last couple of basic settings that we might take into account 
our restart countdown, how long does it take to restart? When we click restart the server, we're going to have a 30 second countdown on that. And then active event, I leave it on current official event. That way, if there are any events, they automatically start without me having to worry about it. Basically, I have control over all of the events, which I think is pretty cool. We'll scroll down a little bit further, guys. I actually don't choose any of these. Optimized RAM, anti-mesh. I don't play hardcore PvP, and I do not play PC. Enable cryo sickness. I can enable or disable that. And then, of course, we could enable primitive plus as well. But you would have to enable that on the main game screen. So remember that as well. Next up, guys, we have the Genesis section. The only one that I check here is the tech suit powers. You can see Genesis building and mission areas. You can disable building and Genesis mission areas. And then you can also disable the missions altogether if you wanted, which... Most people don't like the missions, so I understand that feeling, but they're kind of necessary, unfortunately, in Gen 2. And then, of course, the backup, you can see we're going to start with the current save game. It is going to save as we go, but that's how we would be able to roll back our server. Dynamic maps, we're not going to touch, and we'll go straight down into admin log. Our admin log, the only one that I check off is the activate admin tribe log. Otherwise, I'm not really worried about the rest of it. Um, you guys can obviously check those if you want to. And then down to restrictions, this is where you're going to decide what people can or cannot bring onto the server. As you can see, we have prevent survivor download, prevent item download, prevent dino download, and then prevent survivor upload. So if enabled, this setting will prevent dinosaur downloads, item downloads, character downloads, basically disabling people to bring their own stuff onto your server. Very important. Just be aware, guys, that people might take advantage of that. That's all. And then, of course, disable dino taming if you wanted to just disable the ability to tame altogether. Random supply crates, I leave that. I don't want to randomize the supply crates. I want them to be consistent. And then lastly, disable weather fog. Now, the gameplay section, guys, again, this is really your preference, but pretty straightforward. Do you want to allow flying creatures? Do you want to allow flying inside of caves? Do you want to enable third person mode? I think all of those are pretty important. And then of course enabling crosshair allows for a little bit better aiming. So I enable that as well. You can see enable hardcore mode is disabled. I have zero interest in dying and restarting back to level one. But there you go. That is the hardcore mode. That's how you would enable that. Most of the other ones here really just have to do with people joining the server, leaving the server. Uh, again, it's really up to you guys. Disable floating names. It, it doesn't really matter. It's your preference. Show players on map. This one is pretty important, though, guys, because this is how you see yourself on the map. If this is disabled, you will not see the little dot, and you will not know where you are. When we get down here to these settings that we can start changing the values of, there are a lot more that we need to pay attention to. So the difficulty offset, we're going to leave at 1, because that's going to scale the difficulty. However, the override official difficulty, we are going to change to 6, which actually sets our max level dino at 180. Pretty straightforward. You could obviously increase that like crazy, and the dinos that would spawn in would be ridiculous. The maximum structure count allowed, 1300. Obviously, you could change that. However... You'd want to keep in mind lag on your server as well. And then day cycle speed, nighttime and daytime. This is where you would obviously change the speed of your day or night. But that could obviously affect the spawn of your wild dinos. You have things like prevent disproportionate harvest. Trying to make the settings a little bit more fair for overall gameplay. Uh, destroy all wild creatures. There is a setting for every time you restart your server. You can actually just wipe the wild dinos. I don't do that because as the admin, we can just wipe wipe the wild dinos if we wanted to uh, with a simple command. All item containers are lockable. Damage dinos by spike walls. Disable loot crates. As you can see, guys, it's all pretty basic stuff. But the most important one, enable creative mode. You have to have creative mode box enabled. Even if you are an admin, if you do not have this enabled, you will not be able to go into creative mode. I like to show floating damage text. I personally do. Uh, and then the rest of these have to do with imprint dino buffs. Obviously, we want our imprints. We don't mind if other people are imprinting for us. I don't mind all of that stuff. Override structure platform prevention. I want to be able to build certain things on my platforms if I want to, so I do that. Uh, Non-permanent diseases, 
I don't want to mess with diseases. Uh, stuff like this, again, it's all your preference. I love the fact that we can change all of these settings. I really do. It means that our game can be exactly what we want it to be. If we want to allow our flyers to recover their stamina while flying, so be it. If we want to have platform saddles with multiple floors, so be it. I, I absolutely love it. Um, we can even turn off the spawn animation. I can't stand the spawn animation. It takes so long. For ultimate building, guys, disable your structure placement collision. Whatever makes things the most fun. That's what I like to do. And then coming down a little bit further, use single player settings. I actually do enable this because I typically play by myself. Uh, this is, again, just going to balance the game a little bit more. You don't have to do this. It's totally up to you. I didn't mess with any of this stuff because it really doesn't have anything to do with what I'm doing. I don't play PvP, and I'm always on the server, so I'm not really worried about how often stuff is decaying. At the end of the day, it doesn't really affect me, so I'm not really worried about this section. The next section that I am worried about is PvE. So this here is actually pretty important for breeding purposes. Disables PvP and enables PvE. You cannot destroy and harvest your dinos, which means that when you're breeding, you have a bunch of babies you cannot kill. I need to be able to have the ability to kill my own dinos and clean up the babies from all of the breeding that I do. And then I can, however, prevent the offline PvP. So this is where we would do our offline raid prevention. But the rest of these settings I actually don't use because, again, I don't really worry about the PvP aspect of things. It's really just for the PvE benefit that I leave the PvP setting active. So keep that in mind, guys. I want to be able to fly in caves on PvE. I want to be able to transport dinos and survivors in PvE. So I have these boxes checked. And then again, just some more random settings based on your preferences. The next main section that we're looking at, guys, is the multiplier section. Now, this here is where we're going to change all of our main multipliers for the game. And again, you just have to read what they are. For example, Dino Damage Multiplier modifies the multipliers for damage caused by wild dinos. So you can see I have most of my settings set pretty basic. I really just have taming and breeding and stuff changed. But you guys can go crazy just like you can on single player. This is how you would do that if you wanted to increase damage, player damage, structure damage, all of the above, you can affect your player resistance, dino resistance. It's really as crazy as you want to get with it. The XP multiplier, I turn that up a little bit to three. The taming speed multiplier, I turn up to five. I think that's a pretty good balance. It's not an insta tame, but it's also not a crazy grind. It's like a couple pieces of raw meat or a couple pieces of kibble kind of thing. We've got the harvesting multiplier. We want more resources while we're harvesting, and we want them to come back more often. So I increase those settings there you can see dino hunger and stamina i leave alone again i don't change anything until we come down to the player harvesting damage multiplier because this here says that higher numbers increase the damage done to a harvestable item so the higher the number the faster i collect it which is awesome i don't want to be hacking at a rock forever so i change that to four dino regeneration multiplier that's going to increase their health a little bit i change that to two dino count multiplier I leave that alone. Decay multiplier, I leave that alone. But the resource respawn multiplier, I actually drop to 0.5. So again, it's really important that we read this because it says defines the respawn rate of resource nodes. Values lower than one increase the rate at which resources respawn. So I get rid of a rock. I want that rock to come back, and it's going to come back in half the time at 0.5. You just have to go through the rest of these guys. I've changed a couple more, as you can see. Platform saddle multiplier. I want to be able to build a bunch on my platform saddle. I changed that to 100. Dino harvesting damage multiplier. We're usually harvesting with our dinos. So we want them to actually harvest more, so I changed that to 3. Coming down a little bit further, guys, we jump into our mating multiplier. As you can see, I have this turned down significantly. Time between two pregnancies. Smaller value, more babies. As you can see, I have mine at point zero 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 one. <laughs> Pretty small. I want them to mate instantly. That's right. Egg hatch speed multiplier. I have that turned up because I want them to hatch 
pretty instantly as well. So I have that up to 500. Then you can see the rest of these settings I don't really have changed until we get down to the crop growth speed multiplier. I have that turned up. I want our crops to grow faster. And then, of course, I want them to decay slower. So I have the crop decay speed turned up to 2. Fuel consumption interval, guys, I have that turned up a little bit as well. Don't go crazy with it, though, because then it'll actually take forever to burn basic stuff like wood into charcoal. So I have that turned up just a little bit at two. More of these settings, guys, you can see you can actually affect your swim speed if you attach it to your oxygen. Hair growth speed, you can speed it up or slow it down. I slow it down so I don't look like a crazy. And then the most important down here on the bottom, stack size multiplier. This defines the size of a stack. It does not affect all items, but as you can see, I have it set to 100, which basically means I'm going to be able to stack mine 100 times more than the basic stack size. So I'm going to be able to fit at least 1,000, for example, of meat before a new stack starts in my inventory. So I'm going to be able to fit a lot more in my inventory without it having to scroll and scroll and scroll. This is really effective with meat especially. And then of course guys, our most important section, our baby multipliers. So lastly guys, baby mature speed multiplier, I have at 60. This might be a little fast for some people. You do have to be on the ball with your imprinting. However, the baby cuddle interval multiplier I have set to 0 0.002, which basically means they'll be ready for that imprint in about five seconds and then once you give them that imprint you can drop down here to the baby imprint amount multiplier and you can see I want them to get 100% imprint every time they imprint so I'm going to go ahead and set that to 100 so they're going to go ahead and mature quickly they're going to be ready for their imprints quickly and then they're going to imprint 100% and then over here you can see I have the baby imprinting stat scale multiplier set to three because I want the stats from the imprint to increase by three times the amount because I'm going out of my way to imprint them so guys, that's pretty much the basics of it. The Unreal Engine down here at the bottom has nothing to do with us. We would go ahead and just hit the Save Changes button. And then you can see, guys, the page now says at the top, Settings have been saved, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want, except none of these settings are active on our active server. So we need to restart the server. Go ahead and hit Restart Server at the top there, that green button. And then it'll bring up a box. It'll say, do you want to put in a server message? You can type into your server, hey, quick restart, and then hit restart. Again, we set our server restart timer to 30 seconds. So it's going to give a good 30 seconds to allow anybody to jump off the server before it restarts, come to a safe place where they're dinos, and then it's going to boom. It's going to restart the server. Just like that, guys, all of the settings that we just set up are now active. Now, I'm going to finish this off with you. We're going to pull up Arc just like this, and then I want to show you. We'll go to Join Arc, and then you can see we're going to drop down. I have it on all map modes, so you can find it no matter what. And then, of course, at the top here, I have Genesis 2 picked, and then there's no password protection. We're going to pull up a list of servers here. And right at the top, obviously, I've gotten on my server. You can see Blowout Gaming server, but your server might not pop up right away. You'll just search it in the search bar above. It should pop up. If it doesn't, restart your game. That's another little tip, guys. It will take a couple of minutes for a brand new server to install properly on Arc. So restart your game completely. Leave the server alone. Once you've restarted that after you've set your settings, you're good. But that'll do it for today's episode. I really hope this helps. Again, if you have any questions, make sure to drop those in the comments below. And then, of course, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I'm planning on doing more Nitrido settings videos here in the future. There's lots of settings to go over, and I want to make sure you guys know how to do it all. I'll see you guys in the next one.